Yeah, I'm able to do the request, please. Yes, sir. So, Pastor Pampuli. Okay, sir. Please go ahead, sir. Okay. So, I want to take this time and opportunity to welcome all of us and to appreciate, you know, our brother, Pastor Sam Oret, the convener of this meeting. This is reawakening. You know, I want to welcome uh, our brother, Victor Abba from the UK. Thank you for all you bring to the table, as well as our brother, Dr. Olukayode Oedepo. You are welcome. I want to welcome also Dr. Victoria, I mean, Victoria Olabisi. You're welcome. And then Olumido Akamo, you're all also welcome. Um, yeah, I'm welcoming CJ, our brother CJ. You're welcome to today's reawakening. Our brother, uh, is it Daniel Bright, Donald Bright? Sorry, I'm not able to read that name very well. You're welcome. And our sister Mosmola Anyanyo, you are also welcome. Yeah. And I'm welcoming our brother Korode Adams. You're welcome to today's reawakening. I'm also welcoming our brother Ike Obasi from Nigeria. You're welcome. And thank you. I'm sure you're going to enjoy a good time today as we look at Christians and politics or Christian politicians. The Lord bless you. Hand over to our brother. Yes, let me not forget our brethren on the YouTube. I'm very, very sorry for that. Yeah, you're all welcome. Those of you who are joining us on the YouTube, you're welcome, and the Lord bless you. Thank you very much. Pastor Pampili, thank you so much for doing a great job. Uh, and, and I'm so excited to see the preacher man. That man can preach down the roof, Reverend Kurede Adams. And we can we can wait to see to hear your perspective today on this subject. Good to see you. And uh, <laughs> CG, oh my God, you guys get ready for tomorrow. <laughs> Amen. All right, so go ahead, uh, Pastor Olumi. Uh, uh, yeah, good, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. Um, from wherever you are connected from, this is the reawakening, and the reawakening, um, as the word uh, goes, is to wake us up from slumber. Um, I mean, we used to uh, be awake, now we are being reawakened. So which means that there, there was an initial state. So that initial state is uh, Christ. So um, this vision came about um, during the pandemic when we were all locked down at various places that we were. And um, he came from God to uh, the convener, uh, Reverend Samore. And um, ever since going to three years now, um, it's been um, a session has been set one session from one session to the other, re, um, um, you know, enlightening, um, you know, um, filled with eye opening. I mean, uh, also reguiding us to the path um, of Christ. Okay, it's all about Christ and um, his finished work and everything that is composed and consists in, in him. So, uh, yeah, so that's reawakening and um, reawakening has been a blessing to quite a number of us. In fact, almost all of us here have testimonies uh, one way or another, and uh, we always share that in this place. So it's like we always say, it's been not a cliche, it's more of a, like, like a reminder to every one of us, and it is what it is in actual fact. It helps us to, uh, to learn, to unlearn and to relearn, and so that we can recalibrate our theology and, um, and reposition us back to the real message, the actual message of, um, of Christ um, Jesus, uh, because he's the pillar of everything that we do. So yeah, so you are once again welcome from um, everywhere that you are connected from. And one more thing is that when we come here, we normally pay attention and um, we normally take notes. Um, is is regardless of um, our position, either in the society or even in the, the in the um in, in the in the church um whether you're a church leader you're a geo you're a superintendent you are all welcome and 
we just try to, we come here with open mind, with humility to learn and to, um, and, and also to contribute. So it's usually interactive. For those that are connected um, on YouTube, um, it's, if you really want to comment and then uh, you want your contribution to be, um, to be considered, uh, it's, Zoom is the best place to join. Um, we acknowledge the fact that you are there. However, contributions are more or less um, taken from, from uh, via Zoom. So um, you're all welcome once again. Uh, we love you. Please be attentive and uh, you'll be richly blessed. Thank you very much. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Pastor Lumine. You know, that, that beautiful smile is always contagious. No matter how, how tired somebody is, or how, whatever we're going around you, when, when you listen to Pastor Lumine and, and it gives you that smile, it's, it just brings some, some encouragement. So please keep it up. Amen. Praise God for <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for, for helping us to recalibrate. And I'm, I'm telling you, we're going to have a blast today. It, it set it all perfectly. So for those of us who are just joining, you are welcome. Uh, Pastor Doc Sat Bright, you are welcome. And those who are joining on, the, on YouTube. Uh, just one more thing quickly. Uh, except you cannot help it at all. We always appreciate it if everybody can put on their videos so that we can get to see you and know we're speaking, except you are driving, you know. But if you're not, uh, we we'll appreciate it if you can just see your face. Thank you so much. Professor Pampili, uh, the man, you know, who's always leading on to prayers every, every now and then. So please, when it's time for us to lead on to prayer today, we would appreciate it if you can just, if we can do it by, by, so that we can leave here uh, five minutes to, you know, before the hour. Uh, again, we're not going to be waiting for people anymore because we now notice that people are coming late and uh, it's not fair and some of us will come here on time. So if you really want to contribute, you know, comment, please let's always join on time. I know that the time zones are different. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Larry, I can't let me just join now. Uh, you're welcome. Now, please, let's make sure that we send the links. Uh, the both, both links are available, the YouTube and uh, the the Zoom to all everybody in our contact. And so we're gonna we're gonna get started now. And then we, we already actually started. We started to be honest before you guys came up and before some, some of us came. And we're not gonna go back. So we're just saying that uh, the world politics, like we saw last week, the, the world politics itself is not a bad word because we look look at it from the perspective of the real life application. And, and that is the fact that it is people's management, with leadership skills, being able to interact, people, interact with people using emotional intelligence and bringing about stability and harmony and, you know, and, and peace and joy and being able to connect all of those things together in a way that will not be harmful to people. That is politics. I mean, we look at the dictionary and we look at the etymology of the word itself. And anyone who is interested in what I just mentioned you want people to be joyful, you want people to have peace, protection, you know, whether it's at the family level or in the church or, or in a larger society, you're already involved in politics, okay? So don't let the word politics scare us. We're already in politics. <laughs> it's just that we're not into career polit you know, uh, you know, politics. So those who do it at the government level or party level, those are the people that are career politicians. And so because some of them are terrible people, we just want, we don't want to associate with the world politics. I, I remember one, one time a church member called me and said, uh, because I was, attempt, I was attempting to bring peace about, bring about peace among some people, you know, having issues in the church, uh, between, especially between her, her and her husband. And uh, she used that word, ah, Pastor, you're, you're a politician. And I felt so bad that day because once he said that, the first thing that came to my mind was, it was, she was associating me with, you know, with, with uh, the mess that the political leaders bring to the society. So many of us don't want those words to be thrown at us. Oh, we are a politician. So I felt so bad about it that day. And I said, well, what do you mean? But later when I started looking at the world, I found out that it wasn't actually something that I should be upset about. Even though you have to know, you have to know the context the reference of, I mean, what people are referring to when they call you a politician. If they are saying that you are a peacemaker or you know how to do 
you have to manage people. Then that's a good thing. But you can feel bad if the intent on the heart is to make you feel that, you know, you are you are a schemer or you are, or, you know, you know, you have problems saying the truth, then that could be offensive okay. to a man of God. But the truth of the matter is, whether we want to accept it or not, everybody's already involved in some politics. Again, let's we'll go back to the context of our discussion. Leadership skills, being able to interact with people emotionally and intelligently, the ability to align harmony, joy, peace, and stability orchestrated by love in any community is politics. That is just the truth. So even, even at, at home levels, we play politics with our wives and our children. I mean, sometimes when, I mean, those of us who are married, you know what I'm saying? You know, when you don't want to give something to your children and they come to you and say, Dad, can you please give me so and so? And say, go and meet your mom. Even when you know that your mom will also put them back to you. By the time you put them back, to back, back, and, back and forth, you know, the child's like, what are you, what are you guys doing? What are you guys doing? That's, you are playing politics, man. <laughs> Praise God. And uh, we saw also in the church that there's church politics. As long as it is not harmful, we should never, you know, uh, you know be afraid of, use, of, of, using, of using the word. Actually, what happens is that sometimes it depends on the way the word is used. That's, that is what brings problem. I remember, you know, many, many, many of us when we were growing up, uh, when you see a man that is well-dressed or a woman that is well-dressed and it's looking good, what do you say in those days? I mean, doc, doctor, Dr. Victor Pali, the oldest man here, you know, you say, oh, you are looking gay. I remember using those words when we were, when we were younger because, you know, the, the, the meaning of gay in those days was, oh, you are looking sharp, you are looking attractive. But you can look at a man today in America and he's looking very nice and say, oh, you are looking gay <laughs> because the world has changed the as metamorphosed into something else, okay? So in the same way, people would rather want to be told that, oh, you are a good manager, instead of saying you are a good politician. <laughs> but whether we like it or not, it's just garbage. So whatever word we pick, which you pick, it's okay, as long as you're doing what you're supposed to do. So whether you want to be referred to as a politician or not, it's, it's, it's another thing entirely. But as long as you, you know how to manipulate very well, you're already involved in politics. So let's see Acts chapter six that we read uh, again for, the, for to, in order to emphasize that point. The book of Acts chapter six, verse four, or actually from verse one. Acts chapter six from verse one. Now in those days, Acts six from verse one, when the number of the disciples was multiplying, there arose a complaint against the Hebrews by the Hellenists because their widows were neglected in a daily distribution. Then the 12 summoned the, the, the multitude of the disciples and said, it is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, who we may appoint over this business. Did you see that? But we will give ourselves to continue to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the same pleased the whole multitude because what the apostle said made sense. They could see logic in that. They could see proper management. They, see wisdom, they could see the wisdom of God. And so when they did that, what, 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 the, what was the end result? The Bible says, according to some people, I mean, one of them was, uh, you know, sort of Stephen. But look at verse, verse seven. After they prayed for them and lay hands on them, the Bible says, then the word of God spread. Um, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith, because everybody was doing their part. Those who could not preach like the apostles, they got involved in local management of the people and the resources, in a way that freed the apostles, uh, you know, from those things that were not their, you know, their expertise, as it were. So. Being able to galvanize different energies together with a view to uh, obtaining uh, the same vision for, for that organization is politics. And, and the same thing applies to, your own, to, to the nation. Of course, there are, in this case, there is, there is good politics in the church, but there are also some bad politics. And I believe that uh, actually, it's from the old from the old covenant, under the old covenant, you see people that are career politicians who are Christians. 
I mean, you see people like Joseph, you know, Joseph get, got in the government of Egypt and he played his role. He played, he played, I mean, we don't, we're not going to do all of those, all of those things that we did today, but you, you know what I'm talking about. We are all leaders and pastors and general officers here. Daniel also served under a pagan king. And I think he served under about three or four leaders and, and he played the politics very well as a Christian. He did very well. He was, he was a man of prayer, but being, I mean, praying does, Praying did not get him away from, you know, putting his, his expertise into effect. Uh, and that takes me back to Af African politics, especially Nigeria. And we're going to be discussing that tomorrow. We, we, we pray a lot in the church. We fast, we do so many things, but we don't get involved in the, in the electoral process. And we're wondering why the country is still going down the drain, despite that we are, despite all the prayers we are praying. I know some people look at what you're discussing now. What are they? What are they discussing politics? You know, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, in the church. You see, that's the problem. You know, I actually asked a uh, you know a friend of mine many years ago. Many, many of you know him. He's one of the leading leading pastors in Nigeria. Uh, yeah, but he also does leadership consulting. Uh, we have, we have had him here before. Actually, remember somebody. I mean, many of you know him. So that was a couple of years ago. I had been to, been to Nigeria a long time then. So he was visiting the house. So I was asking him, I said, I am so excited, my friend, for what is happening, what, what is going on in Nigeria. Uh, you know, I mean, churches are springing up, mega churches everywhere. You know, God is blessing his people and all that. So now ask him a question. I said, this revival, because that was what they were calling it, this revival that is going on in Nigeria, is it the revival of cloud or a genuine revival? And he said, hmm, you know, what he paused. And I said, before you answer, let me clarify my question again. I said, the reason why I asked whether it's a, 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 a revival crowd or, or, or a general revival is because if suddenly the government is held accountable and there are good roads, there are good hospitals, the healthcare delivery system, is nice, it's beautiful. You know, no more outrage of power. I mean, university graduates are not looking for jobs for five, five years, 10 years. So some basic, the business of people are met. People are not hungry, they're not homeless. I said, with this crowd I'll still be coming to church. And he looked at me and he paused for a moment and he said, honestly speaking, my friend, I have to be honest with you the crowd will shrink very fast. And some churches might actually close down. That was the exact word. Then I said, then, then that is the case, then there's a problem. Then it means that the revival we're talking about is a pseudo revival. And, and the reason why I brought this up is because, I mean, some of you, some of us here, you know, you said that you live in the West or you, have, or you come here to, to visit regularly or you have lived here in the West Coast, and someone like Pastor CJ, you know, lived in America for, for the most part of his life before he went back to Nigeria uh, for, for ministry and all that. And uh, many of you are in the UK, some of us who don't, who don't, who don't live in the Western world, who travel extensively. And we have seen what, what happens in other countries where they don't pray as much as we do in, in Africa. And you begin to wonder, is God deaf? And we know that God is not deaf, but because we don't get involved in what we are discussing right, right now, Prayer is not going to fix the road. Okay, I know that will sound like, what is he talking about? I've never seen where angels come, came down to any country and they were fixing the road and building bridges. Prayer will not, you know, build, build hospitals. Prayer will not, uh, uh, you know, will not, uh, I mean, as a matter of fact, some of the people that are saying we should pray for protection and then they will give you mantu and give you whatever it is to, for, for protection. Uh, surrounded by Mopo poli police officers. So something's wrong. Something's not, something's not hard enough. I, I don't have anything against security. Don't get me wrong. You have to at some point. But the average person is always the one that is deceived. You know, so an average leader, whether it's in the church or, or, in, or in government, that, that, can, that, that is very popular or they have the, they have the means. Once they have any headache that persists for one and two or three days, guess where they're going? 
they are coming to the UK or coming to America or coming to, or coming to Canada. Then the poor people will go to some of these crusades and conferences where the anointing is supposed to be moving to cure whatever they are going through. But the, people, the person that is praying himself is taking off to America or to UK for treatment. And so all kinds of things go on that we all, we all know. So those things are the things that bother people like us, that we cannot just sit down in, within the four walls of the church and begin to pray and begin to pray. We, Daniel prayed, but Daniel also did something. But nobody prayed more than Daniel in that, in that country at the time in Babylon, but he still did something about it. That is why we're discussing this. Glory be to God. So there, there are good politics and there are bad politics, and we're going to open up for discussion right now. Uh, and of course, uh, Shadrach, Mesak, and Abednego, they also got involved in politics. Joseph of Arimathea, Matthew 27, he was in politics. You know, so even Christ himself, you know, got involved in a way because remember, the two sons of Sibiri, their mother came and said, uh, I have a request. Please grant us, grant me this request that uh, my two sons will sit in, in your right hand in the kingdom to come, one on, your, on the right and the other one on the left. And Jesus said, you're asking for something that is beyond me. It, it, it will only be given to those that has been reserved for. We have, we have been, I mean, that, that's it has been reserved for. Now the Bible says the other you know, 10 were not happy about it. So in other words, there was kissing. There was, there was commotion between the apostles themselves. So Jesus had to calm them down and told them the importance of service, that anyone that become great among you, forget about being great in the kingdom without you serving. So if you want to be great in the kingdom, the kingdom of God, you have to be the one that will serve. And he used that opportunity to say, I mean, look at me, you call me master, but I'm serving everybody. So the greatest in the kingdom is the one that serves the least. Praise God. And they, and they kept quiet. So in other words, he was able to manage the crisis. So again, pastors and leaders here should never be offended when we think that you are playing politics. As long as your politics is people's management with the wisdom of God, with a view to bringing harmony and peace in the place. Many of us probably will have had more people around us today if you understood some of this thing many years ago. Because I was one of those that would say, I would say the way it is. Just say the way it is. No, you know, until I found out that uh, seeing everything the way it is, it's not always the best. You have to be looking for wisdom to manage people and say the right thing. After all, the Bible says, let your word be, let, let, let you know, I think it's efficient to the first 29. It, it says, uh, let no word, let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying so that it may minister grace to the hearers. It's not every time that you say the way, say the way it is, because sometimes you may hurt people in the process. And where they come, where I come from, they say that, Eggs, I mean, words are like eggs. Once they are broken, that's it. Many of us have lost value, valuable relationships that will have taken us to the next level of our lives. But because of the way we conduct ourselves, conduct, conduct ourselves and the way we talk to people, we hurt them in, in, a, in a time to see the truth. And I'm not saying we should not see the truth, but what about what happens to seeing the truth in love? So you cannot be, a, I mean, it, some, some, some people say, well, God told me that I'm going to be the president of uh, South Africa. God told me I'm going to be the president, president of Ghana. It's not everything that God is telling you that you have to announce to the whole world. There are certain things that are for personal consumption. That is emotional intelligence. When you are, when you are telling people that God, God told you you're going to be the president, next president, some people will be saying, okay, see, let us see how you're going to become the president. And other people who are having structure and they are, they are building their base, but you are just saying God told you. You know, and I'm not making any reference to anybody. I'm just saying it because we Christians, we are just, we don't just let some of those things. And that is one of the reasons why Dr. Dr. was saying last, last Saturday, that we have to have a structure in place and make sure that, you know, and I'm not saying God cannot tell you, but it's not everything that God is telling you that for the public. <laughs> Praise God. All right? So let's go ahead and discuss. I have some other things to say, but I don't want to be the only one talking because we are discussing. Okay, go ahead and raise up your hand if you want to make a comment or question or whatever it is, we are having a discussion. Praise God. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. Anybody, please raise up your hand. We have about one hour to discuss. And please, uh, you know, you, you don't have to say everything you want to say under the same breath. So we can say it, then we can circle around 
especially if we have more, more people to talk. Please go ahead. You know, sometimes I feel I don't know what so I don't know what to say sometimes because I I cut down whatever I have in my note so that everybody can talk. But when I say let's talk, we're not we're not talking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do you have the people uh, on the spot? Good evening, sir. Yeah, Kurima, I miss you, man. Oh, we'll put your video. Let's hey. see you. Let's see your face. My rev, I'm, I'm actually driving. Oh, you're driving. Okay, okay, that's fine. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. I'm so sorry. No, no, that's fine. Wow, it's, it's been a while, sir. Thank you for your mm -hmm. consistency. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, this has been going on for a, a few years and mm -hmm. it has been very consistent. Yeah. And I just want to say thank you for all that you're doing. And the, the times that I've joined, it's uh, been of tremendous blessings to, to me. And when I saw the subject tonight, I was excited. I thought, okay, uh, even though I'm still on the road, I thought, let me join just to um, uh, hear your views. And at the same time, also, I can, if uh, there's an opportunity for me to say uh, or comment because somehow um, in the last couple of weeks I've been very my, I've, I've had a lot of thoughts in line of um, Christians and politics, governance and the church and well it, it's been very strong in my heart um, maybe it even started from the American situation with Trump uh, the part that the church played in trying to, and when I say church, I'm not saying the uh, holistic church of America, but at least a, a strong body of believers that have a lot of influence within the church circle in America, how uh, they kind of prophesy, you know, that Trump was going to be the president. And at the end of the day, uh, it didn't turn out to be president. And it's not the first time, even in Nigeria as well. In fact, I think that Nigerians have been experts in prophesying who the next president is before they even go to America. And at the end of the day, it doesn't happen. And uh, someone said, is God really interested in, in politics? Uh, because every time someone prophesied that this would be the next president, it does not really happen. And uh, more particularly, the fact that um, should believers be involved in politics? Well, like you defined, sir, politics is um, uh, uh, has to do a lot with um, di diplomacy of governance, uh, influence uh, in organizations and others, and 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 um, people affairs, as it were. Yeah. So there's no way we are going to be relevant in this world, and we are not going to be political. Uh, whether the leadership of um, organizations or governance, uh, which directly is applied uh, when it when we talk about politics, mm -hmm. I have some kind of line of some line of thoughts which might is is becoming a paradigm shift for me, and I want to share it. Uh, hopefully, I will get more comments. Or hopefully, Rev will also be able to throw more light on it for for me. Um, I had, I spoke to one of our presidential aspirants, of course, uh, who is a believer. I don't want to mention his name. I was at his place last year, December, when he mentioned that when I, uh, uh, he said he was going to come up uh, uh, to, for, for presidency. Mm -hmm. And when he shared his vision uh, for Nigeria with me, and not just Nigeria, he has a global governance vision. And I said to him, sir, with due respect, I believe that you have a clear vision for, for the country in Nigeria, but I don't see you becoming president of Nigeria. Not now. The vision you have does not, I do not see the current systems. We are, we are dealing with systems. There is nothing wrong with a Christian being a politician, but the question is the kind of systems that we're dealing with. Of course, you, you didn't get any votes. Uh, not one delegate voted for him because delegates vote uh, uh, by who, depending on who gives them money. Yeah. That's the system. So uh, it, it's like a conundrum. How do you do right in the system that is wrong from beginning to the end? What I mean is, the, for example, Nigeria, the political system of Nigeria is corrupt. For you to even be, for you to get delegates, I mean, before the people vote for you, which would be at will, 
you know, Ceteris Paribus, but for the delegates to determine whether you're qualified to run for that party, you are going to have to buy the votes. Mm. And so how does a Christian get involved with that? And then I have another line of thought. I was, uh, I, I have this thought, Jesus Christ, who is our example, Jesus lived in the world without, and the, Jew, the, uh, the people, the Jews did not believe he was the prophet. They did not believe he was the Messiah. You know why, sir? Because Jesus did not touch Herod. He let Herod kill John the Baptist. Jesus did not touch Pontius Pilate. He subjected himself to him. Jesus did not change Caesar. He told them, give to God what is God give to Caesar, what is Caesar. And yet he changed the world. And Jesus did not directly get involved with governance. And when I thought about it, I said, okay, so uh, I don't think we can blame church if the church in, is influencing the nation without necessarily affecting the governance of that nation. Because Jesus did not change the governance of his nation. And he was Messiah and he changed the world. Now, when I asked that question, what I, the answer that I believe the Holy Spirit gave me was the fact that it's a matter of understanding the prophetic timeline. God, Christianity is about kingdom and kingdom is governance. In fact, more than we having church, more than praying in tongues, more than uh, 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 having church service, the most, uh, the most important part of, of, our, of, of, of Christianity is the kingdom. And kingdom is about influence. So um, I, I, I was in that dilemma to ask, you know, like, should, now Jesus did not directly influence the governance of his environment because he let them be. In fact, the reason why they didn't accept him as Messiah is, how can you say you are the deliverer and we are still under Caesar? How can you say you are the deliverer and you left Herod, you left one, you, you couldn't change any of those people. When Jesus resurrected, Peter asked him, ah, is that all? When will you restore the kingdom to Israel? What he was saying literally is the fact that the prophecies of Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Malachi, is that when the Messiah comes, he will restore the leadership and the governance of Israel put headquarters of the world back in Jerusalem, make the law of Israel the governing constitution of the world, because that is scripture, that is prophecy. Out of Zion shall go for the law and the word of law from Jerusalem. That was a prophetic word to establish that the kingdom of the Messiah will be in Jerusalem. But Jesus' answer to Peter was, it is not for you to know the time, but you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon me, you, and you shall be my witness. Peter wanted to know when Jesus would take the seat as the Messiah in Jerusalem, but Jesus was telling him it is not the time. The primary assignment of the church is soul winning, is evangelism, because we are preparing people for a kingdom. So I felt uh, Jesus came the first time as a lamb, is coming the second time as a lion. Unfortunately, that part of the gospel, the church doesn't preach it anymore. And it's not because we are more spiritual than Peter, James, and John, who got excited about Jesus' coming. And somehow that part of the gospel has been deleted gradually. It wasn't preached as uh, that now as it was preached then because they looked forward to his coming when he will now come and take governmental position. Now, these are my thoughts, sir. Yeah, yeah. The church, a, a Christian can be in politics, but his primary assignment is to win souls and make disciples of nation. That's the reason why I felt the American church, the body of believers in America, were, they were going to try and use the governance of Trump to establish God's kingdom on the earth by saying that Trump should be the one to stop abortion, stop gay. Then Trump should be the one to stop lying to stop every other sin, because there's no difference between lying and, and, and homosexuality and abortion. They are all sins. And this is only what the ministry of the church, so it's like the church wants to give government the assignment to do. Meanwhile, the church is the light of the world. And then that's why, number two, the church cannot make a mess. I don't think Peter will be 
is the answer to Nigeria. I think Jesus is the answer to Nigeria. Every time we look to man, man will always fail us. I feel that more than any other time, the church is supposed to take the responsibility of reconciling the world to Christ. That's why Jesus will always be our message, will always be our focus. Because one of these days, this same Jesus is going to come back the second time and it will be political. Right now, he's not political. Because when he came the first time, he wasn't political. He let Pontius Pilate be. He let Herod even kill his brother. He let, you know, he let um, Caesar be. He didn't touch Caesar, and yet he saved the world. And so I, I feel that uh, the church can see save the world without politically uh, being in governance because we're looking at Jesus as our model. And if we understand prophetic timeline, I feel that not that a Christian cannot be in politics or take political position, but the primary assignment of the church right now is to raise believers, to reconcile the world to Christ and prepare for the coming kingdom. In prophetic timeline, Jesus said that the time is going to come when I will now sit as a governor among the nations. At that time, only Christians, only believers will be governors, only believers will be president. You know, maybe the way we look at it, it, it sounds when a Christian is talking about Jesus' second coming and the reign of Christ on the earth, it, it looks like something that is far-fetched. But that is what completes the gospel of the kingdom. In fact, that I believe is the message of the gospel of the kingdom because the gospel of the kingdom is the gospel that Jesus came, he died, he resurrected, and that resurrection is is not just his resurrection, but the resurrection that puts an end to death, restores fully the program of God on the earth, uh, and then Christ sits in his glory on the earth, and he reigns, and then believers are reigning with him, and then we're in governance. And right now, it's important for every child of God to understand governance, because you cannot be kingdom and not have governance in mind. Because if we start to look at governance, then we have to prepare people. So maybe somebody thought he would be president of Nigeria, Maybe it's true that one of these days he will be president of Nigeria, but not in the democracy system that is corrupted right now. It's not impossible. Maybe he will still be president of Nigeria when Jesus comes. <laughs> okay. Wow. That, 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 that's, that's, uh, that's, that's food for thought, uh, Korima. I, I, I appreciate yes, your perspective. And that's one of the reasons why you know, we're, having, we're having this conversation. So everybody comes and brings their perspective and uh, we look at everything. And one beautiful thing is that, is that, you know, here Christ is the center of our discussion. And thank God, you, you, know, you know, all of us listen to you attentively. As a matter of fact, if you had been here last Saturday or so, I think we covered aspects of some of the things we talked about, about the church not being partisan, you know, um, because in the summary of everything you know that you have, you have said in my opinion is that uh, uh, Christians can participate in politics, but I, I don't think it's it's appropriate for the church to stand behind uh, a political party or a, a presidential candidate and say this is what you're going to vote for, as if that person is going to be the Messiah and the savior of the nation. Uh, the gospel is the primary assignment of the church. However, the church can train people and raise them up to get involved uh, in other social or in, in, or in business or, you know, you know, media. I mean, just Christology generally, which is, which is one, when we're talking about Christology, uh, that our Christ uh, is, is, you know, through him, everything in this world today consists and all of that. And uh, what, what a perspective you have brought today. Uh, and uh, like rightly said, I also think that, uh, you know, the, most of the people today, have not been taught properly uh, eschatology in the right from the right perspective, you know, because a lot of people just don't think that there is uh, another kingdom coming that will be imposed upon the earth, you know. So, so thank you for that perspective, Korema. Now, okay, so they always people always say, let me put the devil's advocate, even though I'm not I'm not the devil. So but let's let's let me say let me say this also, Korema. So what I in one minute, because there are other two who are raising their hands, and I'm calling call, call, uh, as a CJ and the uh, pastor very shortly. Uh, Koreman, if somebody wants to ask a question that, okay, you are saying what you're saying because you are, you're comfortable, you live in a decent house in Lagos, you drive a nice car, you travel out of the country, you preach all over the world, 
you're not hungry, you know, you know, things are not hard for you. I mean, you, some basic things of life, you have them, you know. Uh, you know, God has helped you, you're healthy, you know, you know, your, your children are okay, everybody's okay. You're not one of those masses. That's, that's why you go, that, that's why you are saying this. That if you look at what is going on you know, in, in, in the country, you know, the, the church will get involved and, and hold this this uh this politician responsible because in the final analysis, if uh there is no proper structure in place, let's say there's a chaos or there's a civil war or there are their life, life becomes unbearable for for another for every people like we have to like we have today you know people are now invading churches killing people you know and I, I pray it don't go it don't go beyond this even the gospel that we so the church that we preach Korema we will be in jeopardy because you can only preach the gospel you know where 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 there is no war uh, what, what are you going to say what are you going to say to that in in, in what minute Korema Yes, thank you very much, sir. Yes, um, th- there's always a balance to every perspective. I mean, I definitely came from like, because I've always believed that, oh, uh, we, should, we should take over, we'll take over generation. Some, mm-hmm. some of the things I shared in the last few minutes are, are like a paradigm shift for me recently because that was not my line of thought. But I'm beginning to challenge the status quo and then, at the end of the day, we're going to be able to find a balance. Nigeria is in that state that maybe someone said we are on the time bomb. We, we have to pray. You know, people are having dreams every day that things are going to get worse, a whole lot of stuff. And I said, okay, I'm a Christian. At the same time, I'm a citizen of Nigeria. As a citizen of Nigeria, I have my, my, my responsibility to make sure we're not going to keep quiet. In fact, I'm trying to, that there are things I've been meaning, okay, I will do. Um, as a pastor, I cannot, I cannot be a part of a, I cannot come to church and say, this is who you vote for. Right. I agree with you, sir. I don't think the church will make that mistake mm. to, to join, to identify publicly with a party. Yes. Because a pastor is the pastor of PDP, APC, Labour, you know, just like in America, you pastor Republicans, you pastor Democrats. You, uh, it, it becomes sentimental. Mm-hmm. If you come out and say, oh, I'm not a, uh, I support Republicans, or I support Democrats and all that, because there are believers in all of these parties. Mm-hmm. And as a pastor or the body of believers, uh, maybe PFN, uh, people are saying, no, PFN should come out and tell us who to vote for. I think that will be, I think that would be inappropriate. Yeah. I, I think what that. is appropriate is for us to, to stand and let people know they should not be influenced by the corrupt leaders who are using money to determine vote. People should just be patriotic, which is, should be the message of the church because the church is the ground and the pillar of the truth. And we should be, and we are the light of the world. We should be able to let people know, no, this is what you should do. This is what you should not do. This is the kind of leader you should vote for. And, and um, at the same time, we have to balance it with the spiritual side of it. Yeah. I was telling someone, I said, no matter what we do, the word of God will be fulfilled. Eschatologically, things are going to get bad because the Bible says darkness will cover the earth and gross darkness the people. The heart of men will fail them for fear. Kingdoms will rise again kingdoms. There will be a fall in systems and governance. And that's what we're saying. Not only in Nigeria, in every part of the world. America, as great as the nation is, has a lot of issues. I mean, uh, um, so we, we are looking at the scriptures being fulfilled. No matter how much we pray, we cannot pray against the will of God. Amen. In fact, that's the more reason I, I look at the, the masses in my environment and I'm telling them they need to know about Jesus because whether we like it or not, people are dying every day. Poverty is killing people. Nigeria is sitting on the time bomb. What mm. I mean is even economically mm. because every month they're borrowing. Mm. The way forward is 
in as much we, we have to be able to stand strong as citizens of the country and at the same time jesus is the only answer for the world and more than any other time Praise what is God, happening yeah. at war today is the more reason why we need to preach him yeah. and let people know that you see you cannot suffer now and suffer again praise god i, I love yes, I, I, lo I, lo I love i love that i mean I love the conclusion. I mean, what a great opportunity, uh, you know, to share the love of God to mankind and let them know that there is hope of, of eternal life with Christ. Uh, unfortunately, like Radley said, uh, that the, the gospel, black gospel, is not even preached in a, in our churches anymore, which is very sad. You know, everybody just preaching mammon and uh, mega churches, in, you know, building building, you know, uh, cathedrals. You know, we're just interested in numbers and how much more, how much more, because many people, I mean, more people will translate to more, more money, and, and just very sad. But thank you so much for, for, for Pastor, uh, Pastor uh, Reverend Cole I mean, please join us tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern. I think that should be 8 p.m. Uh, Nigeria. We're going to be going, we're going to be narrowing down to Nigerian politics tomorrow by God's grace. So we're going to have, we're going to have some kind of debate tomorrow, and it's going to, it's going to be very interesting. Trust me. Uh, that one, we're going to be raw. In mo, in the role of a moderator, neutral, non-partisan uh, person. Then they're going to. There are some people, you know, who have volunteered to 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 discuss for their, their you know their perspectives on what they think should be the next president in Nigeria. Uh, I mean, some people believe Peter B. Some believe Atiku. Some believe is Jagaban. So we're going to have the three of those people tomorrow. <laughs> And it's going to be very explosive. Please, if you can join us as participants, that'll be very good. Thank you, uh, Reverend Kodia Dan, for your perspective. Now, Dr. Oluga Odeko, please go ahead. Then uh, after that, we'll call uh, Pastor CJ. Thank you very much, sir. Um, um, thank you for this opportunity. Um, I just want to say a few things, um, um, particularly in response to what um, uh, Pastor Kodi had um, said. Um, I totally agree with him this, that there's a lot we can do outside of the corridor of our corridors of power all over the world. And that um, and that Jesus did not get involved in, 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 in governance of his days, yet he had tremendous influence. However, um, I don't think that we should limit the um, the God ordained destiny of every believer to the heavenly destiny of Jesus. Um, because, for example, Jesus was meant to be a king. Jesus was a carpenter. He lived in a small country, never traveled all over the world. Some of us have global ministries, right? Just we have global ministry in the sense of his earthly ministry. Um, um, for example, let's look at a man like William Wilberforce. I was reading about him on, on BBC, and that's even a neutral network. And what was written about him was that um, William Wilberforce, a social reformer whose Christian faith led him to spend his political career campaigning to bring an end to slavery. That is one man whose um, who needed the political platform to be able to fulfill his God-given, you know, um, 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 ministry or, or, or career, so to say. And if he had said that, oh, Jesus is um, Jesus never got involved in politics. Maybe you and I would still be serving on those uh, on those farms at the moment and all that. I just wanted us to look at it from that perspective. Jesus as a person may not be. Um, um, may not need to die to enter into covenants physically, rather. Uh, but we know that, like you also alluded to, sir, that he's coming back to still come take political powers. But there's a lot he still wants to do here and after this moment. And we, being his body, we should find if we should be able to align with that and get involved in politics. If it would mean, if we would need political power to um, achieve some of some of these hands. That's just what um, I wanted to contribute. Thank you. Oh, powerful, 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 uh, uh, Pastor Uh and, 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 and 
And I also think that, I think that was where part of the evidence was saying that we need to, we're going to try some balance at some point so that we're not completely at, at least useless, sorry, uh, at least um, relevant and definitely useless on vice versa. So being able to strike the balance, you know, it's always, it's always been a big challenge in the body of Christ. You know, when the prosperity message came many years ago, everybody just went boom, 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 and uh, from simple message on the desire of God to prosper his people, the church went into materialism with mammon. And now when nobody's even talking about heaven anymore, nobody's talking about uh, the kingdom to come anymore. Every day is, oh, I want to grab, grab, grab what I want to, what I want to do here on earth. You know, uh, and uh, be, but before that time, it was, oh, heaven, 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 heaven. Just give me heaven, just give me, you can, and can take the whole world. Just give me Jesus. You know, and uh, people who are, who, who drove from school, they were pulling up from school, they were not going to school anymore because they thought it was going to come, rapture was going to strike. So they were, they were heavenly minded and became utterly irrelevant. And I think that's one of the reasons why we're where we are today. And so when these other people now came and say, you know what, before Jesus comes, let's take over this earth. Now we are trying to take over the earth and we're forgetting about heaven. So I'm just praying that, and that's why Christ is, the, is should be at, should be the center of our discussion here. Because with Christ, you cannot, you can't tilt towards one particular angle at the expense of the other one because it's always it's all it's, it's the balance himself. Praise God. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah. So, I don't know if I can, before I, I also want to add to that, it just occurred to me that I think that there's also a fundamental mistake. I want to believe it's a mistake that we make as a body. That because Jesus is our example, we think that um everything about us must align with the life of the physical Jesus that walked the earth. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we say Jesus was never sick, so I must never be sick. <laughs> Jesus was rich. In fact, people say they should be prosperous because they said Jesus won expense and things like that. I think if we take it literally like that, the Christ that is our example transcends even the man that walks the face of the earth. Right. It is the spirit of that Christ, which we see in all of the New Testament, that forms an example for us. So that's why somebody like Paul could say, follow me as I follow Christ, because I can adequately, through my teachings, precepts, and actions, show you who Christ is beyond even the man that you saw lived from Mark back to John. If we stay within the ambit of scripture like that, it will be difficult to limit our uh, have influence on the other system. Correct. I, I, I absolutely agree with you. I, I'm going to call on the uh, Pastor CJ. And after that, I was, I was Lan, Dr. Lang in the, 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 the Sutter. Uh, by the way, uh, again, please let's, let's continue this discussion tomorrow on a raw, deeper note at 3 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Nigeria. And, uh, you know, at that point, there's no holding back because that was a political discussion. This is your awakening. <laughs> Amen. Go ahead, Pastor uh, CJ. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone. And uh, my dear brother, uh, Dr. Adams, or Pastor Adams, thank you so much for that. Um, you really got us started. Thank you uh, very, very much. And uh, I sincerely appreciate your spirit. I love the way you put it. That's uh, the best way to put some of these things. We push the challenge and then we try to strike a balance uh, somewhere there. So that is very, very amazing. Thank you so much uh, for that. And um, I think the first thing is that when people hear politics, they think about election, very terrible. They think about election. Politics is our everyday life. And when we talk politics, we talk about Nigeria. I lived in the US, I studied in the US. I worked for the US government uh, before I came to this back to Nigeria here. Politics, let me tell you what politics is. For example, in a place like US, when you go to meet a doctor, when you are sick and go to meet a doctor, what they, how they treat you, what they say to you is decided politically. They have been, they have, what they say to you is based on what they have been, has been outlined for them. That is the reality of politics. So politics goes beyond election. Politics is how we live our everyday life. There are a lot of things 
that I may not be able to say here, but I wish that people would just dig in a little bit and do some uh, research to know how this thing affects my everyday life in every way. Education, medicine, traveling, what I eat. Today, we know that one man single-handedly changed the medical industry in the US using politicians. We know that now. So, so having laid this background, I just wanted to put that so that we understand how critical this is, that this is beyond election. Now, concerning what my brother said, um, there's a lot of um, theological issues around it and I, I'm not permitted, I don't have the uh, muzzle in the midst of my fathers to start talking about big theological issues because I was going to, <laughs> I was going to say uh, whether the coming of Jesus was going to be a physical Jesus coming in and sit on a throne or whether it is his kingdom ruling through the heart of men and taking over these systems. Now, now that's a different thing altogether. But where we are, how can we truly love people and care for them, right? Because I have been forced to go into things that I shouldn't have even ventured in just for the love of people because I see their suffering. I see their pains. I see that people, as I talk to you today, one of our church members lost a nephew who is 10 months old because this chair started vomiting. They took him to the first hospital, no doctor. Second hospital, no doctor. The third hospital they got to, the doctor that was there, they didn't know what to do. I'm talking about what happened yesterday. Mm -mm. Things that should have never happened. So let me also come to the other side. Those who know me will tell you. I've been in ministry. I'm, I'm not, I'm a very young guy in ministry. You know, I've been pastoring, you know, about five years now going to six years. Everything I have preached, those who know me will tell you, I don't preach anything else outside of Christ. Correct. Yes, everybody will tell you that. That's my message day in, day out. There's no, nothing about that. But what I have realized is this, just like my good brother said, We've got to strike a balance. We are not supposed to be politicians. I've told my people in church all the time, our faith, and God asked me to tell them that, I can never build my faith around the systems. But don't forget, physically, I'm here to play a role. My faith is not in anybody, can never be. Why would my faith be in anybody? That's not possible. But because we are physically here, we have roles to play in these things. And wherever there's an opportunity, to play it, we have to play it. Now, the question becomes, at what level do we play that game? The issue of churches getting involved in politics. Let me just tell you what is going on in some places, and I totally approve of that. Some churches here have learned that this is not about party. So they will tell you, they will give you an example. I had one of the, uh, Bishop Abioye, you know, let me mention his name. Uh, Bishop Abioye here of uh, Living Faith. Um, of course, you know, wherever Bishop Abioye stands is probably where Bishop Oedebo stands. He was telling the people, hey, look, look at the, he never mentioned the party's name, right? But when he described the truth, everybody knows what he was saying. Everybody knows what he was saying. Everybody knows what he was leaning to. And this thing is not about Nigeria alone. The Supreme Court in America just overturned Roe versus Wade. This coming election in America is a religious election. It's, a re it's going to be 100% religious election. Whether you're going to be able to have abortion or whether you're not going to be able to have abortion, that's what it's going to be. So my take in all this is this. We are not supposed, we, our work is to point people to Christ. But the reality of that light is that we must have to guide the people to use that light wherever is necessary. Wherever that light is necessary. Now, the other, thing I, the other thing I want to add a little bit so that I can keep this a little bit short is this. How do we get our people? I wanted to say this last time. The problem is that we don't prepare our people for the political process. We prepare them for election. Just somebody wakes up, just like he was saying, election is coming. Somebody jumps from the sky. I'm, I'm, I'm going to win. How? 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 How are you going to do that? I have people in our church who are in the process. When they came and told me, Pastor, I'm going to run for this office. I sat them down. I said, bro, let me tell you. Let's leave Pastor Mata now. Let's do it, bro. This is correct, bro. Let me just tell you the way it is. Do you want to run election 
or do you want to be involved in the political process? Those are two things, two different things. Christians talk about these things only during elections. We come out and say, God has asked us to be president only during elections. How is that going to work? I told the guy, I said, because in my spirit, I could not see him getting the ticket that he was looking for. So I was preparing him for a process. I told him, if you want to do this, you've got to be ready to enter the political process. It takes a process. This is the same reason our people don't do well in business. We prophesy to them, we give them oil, we don't prepare them for the process. It's the same thing. If we don't get involved in this matter, we might as well tell people, don't get involved in business, don't get involved in a whole bunch of things. Because it doesn't matter whatever you do in this, under this song with people, there is some civil service. Sir, sir, are we talking about political office? Civil service. Go and see what is involved in the civil service. There's more politics in the civil service structure in this country than during the election. Election happens only four years. Civil service politics is every minute, every hour, every second. And so that is, that is just the truth. So I think that we should, now that we know the, how it is, I think that the church should be ready. It's not for everybody. We prepare people to be doctors. We prepare people to be nurses. There's nothing wrong in allowing our people to be going to police, but we have to be able to prepare them for the process and stop this whole election thing. Election comes, I wake up and say, God wants me to be president. No process, no, no structure. Not, how, how is that going to work? Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Praise God. Wow. But what, what, what a perspective. Before, before, you know, before I give Larry uh, two minutes to talk, also two, three minutes, uh, what if, if, if somebody is, uh, somebody is trying, somebody is saying, I agree with what you said, but somebody is, maybe some, let me, let me ask a question on behalf of somebody who may be thinking, well, hey, Pastor CJ, I agree with you. However, Trump became a president of America without any structure. The man was an outsider to politics. He just crushed everybody and became the president. Would that be an exception to the rule? Sir, so, thank you. Let me answer that question of structure. It's just that people don't think. What is structure? Structure can be an ideology. Structure can be a way of thinking. It's just that people don't think. When they hear what they start throwing, a uh, structure thing that means that uh, uh, you have uh, delegates all over the, the place. No, sir. I follow. I'm an American. So I follow what is going on. Trump saw a structure, an ideology that was born in, and he jumped on top of it. That's exactly what happened. There is something that was on the, the ground. He understood it. He understood that there were some people who are dis, is disenchanted, right? They are disenchanted with the way things are going on. The day Trump came out and said, let us take our America back. What did you think he was talking about? He was speaking to a structure. Structure does not necessarily mean house and, 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 and boats. In this country, suffering has become our structure. <laughs> Lack of neighbor has become our structure. We have to find people who can connect to these existing structures. Come on, what, what is structure? Uh, somebody carrying bullion van, sharing money to the other place. Is that what a uh, uh, structure is? So I can give you example, an example of what is, is going on. So when people say structure, no, Trump did not fall from the sky. Trump connected to a structure that he knew was there. And that's exactly what, what, what uh, uh, happened. That structure, that structure was in his language. That's why he kept making some, some remarks over and over and over again. So structure is not necessarily, you have party offices painted all over the place. No, structure can be a way of thinking. It can be an ideology, it can be a correct. Like I told you, sir, like I told you, sir, this coming American election is going to be a religious election. Thank you, sir. Amen. That, that, that's fair enough. Uh, you know, thank, thank God you explained that you know, structure because some people are already saying that uh, you know, uh, you know, the Nigerian election. You don't if you don't have money, if you don't have structure, you, know, you don't have uh, Godfathers. It cannot be any. It cannot be anything. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm 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 glad that you cleared that up. Anyway, we're going to talk more about that tomorrow in the details. Now, Doctor Larry Akirimi, please, it's all yours. Then Dr. Duzote will talk next. Thank you very much, sir. I, I am excited, and I probably think this is the second time I'm going to talk on this platform because I, I am a permanent student here. 
And uh, I will talk because I think that. Uh, the, you, want run, you want to run for the governor of uh, Ekiti State or Lagos State? <laughs> no, because I want to. I want to. I want to speak to power. Okay. And because I know power is represented on this platform. Thank you, uh, Dr. CJ or Pastor CJ. Thank you so much. You know, you said you build doctors, you build nurses, you don't build politicians. No, 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 no. All the powers on this person, they don't, they don't, they don't build nobody. Because they don't let us realize that we are ministers, whatever you are. As a doctor, you're a minister there. As a nurse, you're a minister there. Preaching the gospel. As a lawyer, as a politician, it's not only by coming to church and being on the altar. So, what I am saying is this. Let's start from here. All our leaders that are here, with all due respect, I'm not talking, okay, let's leave here. All our, all our church GOs, from the primate, minister, doctor, whatever, with the followers we have, how many of them they can pick a ballot and 100% of the followers we vote for them? That should stay a statement to us. Thank you, Dr. CJ. Somebody said here that a pastor did and God said, what does that tell us? What, where is our influence? Where is the influence? Where is the influence? There are no Christian among the delegates that the message of the pastor resonates with for this company, country, the vision. So, how come money could make? So, what I'm trying to say is this. Who are we building and what are we building? Are we building followers or are we building leaders? Most of us will build followers because we are happy. I have 100,000 sit at our church and it's filled up. We are happy for the followers. And where they need to stand, they fail because they are followers, they are not leaders. Because they don't know the difference between money and future. Vision and money. And that's what happened. And what I'm saying is this. Yes, I'm not talking of physical structure, but when I say building a system, I agree with the leader that said that it's not by election. But how many, how many, how many church leaders have said it's more important you join your political process? Pastor C just said it, process. Your political process from the world. We are not recommending the parties for you, but join a party of your choice at the world. So when it comes to choosing who you will vote for, you will be part of that. Can I tell all of us today, if all the parties choose devil, we have devil as, as the president of Nigeria, no matter the anointing. Because the people that will choose who is going to you are, going, you are going to vote for in the first place are chosen by the delegates. How much influence do we have? How much have we built our people to be part of the delegate, the grassroots, where you now begin to choose? Okay. That's how our, that's how our pastor failed, if you don't know. We failed him. We failed him because we never built anybody that resonates at that grassroots. <coughs> we know that if he has chosen, probably we get millions of votes, but he, 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 was, he was, didn't have the privilege to be chosen because we did not even have any Chris, anybody. We've not built leaders that can understand what is here to do. So people will sell their future for only 200 naira, <coughs> irrespective of the amount you have. I would love to be part of tomorrow. Please, I'll be, I'll be waiting for tomorrow. Thank you, sir. Wow, that's a serious one, man.
you, you kept me thinking, and she, your, your, your discussion is in alignment with the uh, OCG that, I mean, I think, well, we, I think we said it earlier to also today also that people should get involved in the electoral process. See, the truth of the matter is that uh, I agree with CG and Dr. Larry. I mean, sometimes it's too late, you know, when we're talking about, you know, politics, we're not talking about election. You know, election sometimes is just a few months away. And that's when Christian has said, I mean, I, I know that uh, the pendulum can swing into our, into, the, into our direction in favor of God, but that would be an exception. And just, just human nature that, uh, uh, you know, we just want to make the exception the rule, which is which supposed to be uh, the reverse. Uh, as a matter of fact, there are some people who also have another, uh, who, are, who are also discussing the alternative to a failed Nigeria, God forbid, if Nigeria fails as a nation. You're talking about regional government and all of that. We, you know, we're going to be talking about all of that later, but that one can be, we can't talk about that now openly for some reason. So that's why we're getting involved in Nigerian politics uh, tomorrow. Uh, please, when you're talking, you can make, thank you, Dr. Larry, for keeping the time. We appreciate it. Please, let's, let's, you want to see your video so that we can see who's talking. Dr. Dusete, please go ahead. Okay, um, good afternoon, um, House. Um, uh, for me, I think um, what, what we are discussing has to do with um, um, how we as Christians and how the, our realities in Christ should shape our involvement with politics. Okay. And um, we don't want to lose that focus. That what we are saying is that we are Christians. And uh, politics, eventually, the whole goal is about having right people in this context now, having right people who will mount um, uh, the platform of leadership, yeah. whether in Nigeria or anywhere, any world that we find ourselves. And I think that um, the same rule that affects Christian in business, Christian in education, Christian in sports also affect Christians in politics. How the fact that we are raising our people to know that their primary reason of existence is a master's pleasure. Christ is the reason why we are alive and is the one we are living for. His love is in our hearts. And in whatsoever we do, we are driven by allegiance to him. Some of us, naturally, we will have an art slant towards leadership. But when you look at the structure in our own state by which that is being established, the, polit the political process, then we have to be part of that process so that eventually trusting God that some of us will come to position of leadership. And with our own Christian uh, value system, without necessarily compromising the dictates of the, uh, the, um, uh, the constitution, the working constitution of the country that we belong, we want to see how we can work in that context. And then we are saying that we are bringing forth that which you help the people of the land without necessarily saying that we want to go and advance uh, the cause of Christians. I think if we understand this and we're teaching this to the people constantly, not just when election is near, and these are some of the things we said last week, that we have Christian who takes this as their own career. This is a path that I want to follow, part of leadership. And I know that leadership is about service. So I enter into it, you know, either if I have to enter it from the grassroots, then so be it. Some of us will enter it through the, from the grassroots. Some of us will enter it at the medium level. Some of us at the top level. Then I also see that it is not only people in politics that were able to influence. There are some people in business because they've make they've made most of their business, they are influenced, they also affect the politics of the land. 
people in sport also, people in business. So we want to see to either as church, what we are teaching our people is that the, our drive is about Christ. But because this is Christ's world and we are involved, then we must be involved well. Whatever we, all our involvement, whatever space. If you are in sport, then do it well. Make sure you are the best, at least to the best of your ability with good conscience towards God. And whatever that comes out of it, see to it that you steward it well. The same thing in medicine, the same thing. So the same thing now come to governance. Some of us will be involved. Now, some people get involved in politics after they've made success of whatever primary business or career they are. And they see that as platform to enter. Uh, I, is it George Weir now of Liberia? That contest, is it George Weir of Liberia? I can't remember. Yeah, George Weir, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Now, if that guy had not made most of that uh, uh, football career, I don't know whether he would have had that kind of platform and influence that he had. But you see, why is muting the idea of going to politics if private, if, I don't know whether he's a Christian, I don't know his belief. Let's say that he's a Christian and he has commit, uh, communicated that to his pastor. Then such a person should have understand and get into the training, the learning, the leadership, the risk, the challenges that is involved in governance, reading, learning, getting into everything and being equipped. I don't just think that because I've made success out of football, then I would naturally make success out of leadership. They are two different worlds. So we are, you know, in the context of our people being Christian, which cannot be compromised. We are Christians, and Christian life must drive us, our allegiance to Christ. Then in whatever field we find ourselves, we see to it that we are not naive, we are not novice in whatever we are doing. We give ourselves to it. We do all the reading, all the learning, everything that is needed. But you see, we are also being driven by human faith. The love of God is in our heart. We are interested in the progress of people. We are interested in the progress of the land. And there will be sacrifices that will be demanded at junctions. Pastor Kate mentioned William Wilberforce. That is a lot of sacrificial thing those guys did. It, it wasn't easy for them, you know. There was a lot of opposition at the, from the British leadership at that time. A lot. But those guys were bent because they were driven from their hearts. They saw it. We saw politics in Nehemiah. When Nehemiah wanted to go and rebuild the wall, it was the wall he wanted to go and rebuild. He was told. But when he started, the people saw his heart. They saw how he fought for the poor when they were being enslaved by the rich. Eventually, they made him the governor. And even when he became the governor, it was for the people, their progress and everything. So we are raising our people primarily to know the reason why they go into all things. It's not just that uh, we want to win the world, we want to win Nigeria. We are not here to win Nigeria. Yeah. We are here to represent Jesus in the context of any nation that we find ourselves and see how the Christian life, the Christian ethos, we shape our involvement and trusting God that we do it well. And then while we are in it, we never back out from our primary commitment to the master. Yeah. Did Daniel never let pray? The Daniel were dogged in their fellowship with God because they knew all the success and all the advance they had made has always been on the basis of their vertical relationship. I think, uh, yeah. for me, this is the way we train our people without necessarily being partisan, partisan to anything and release them so that we can do what God we have us to. Thank yeah. you, sir. Wow. All, all the perspective, Dr. Bissote. I think so many hands are raised. So from this moment forward, please, whatever we continue, going to, let's, let's be short. If you have time, then we can circle back. Dr. Dizode, what a, what a powerful word there. I mean, something stood out in what you said, and I love it, that we, our literate leaders' responsibility is to preach Christ. And also, you know, in an attempt to teach people and train them for the marketplace, let them, let's, let love be their umpire. Let, let's let them know that they are going to serve, whether it's in business or in sport or media or politics, they are primarily going to serve. That is so powerful. 
But and it must begin with us because we can only model what we want them to do. Also, Christ modeled the greater leadership example that 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 any man can 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 have, you know. And uh, we're in a situation where, you know, the the the, the church leader is more corrupt than the politician out there. So and and is raised under that kind of a corrupt pastor. What's going to happen? This guy is going to go into politics and begin to grab everything he can grab, and that's why the whole thing is messy. To be honest with you, with us, uh, even though we want to get involved in uh, want to raise people and all of that, and to go into politics and all that, but I think the the, the we should not lose focus of our immediate constituency, which is what Pastor Dusa is alluding to, that the church must be purged. And that's one of the reasons why we started we are working by the grace of God. So that we can let's go back to the basis first. In a situation where you know a church leader is endorsing the political the political party or a political um, or a president aspirant simply because he's hoping that when the man get becomes the president, he can actually can brag that oh, you know, this is a member of my church or we what I endorse him. Or he's looking for contract or looking for, for he's looking for oil well. You know, so and this this these people can read within the line as a pastor, you're speaking in tongues, we know what you're looking for. You know, uh, but my closeness to some church leaders in Nigeria, and you know, you, you don't want to know what's going on. We don't mention names and we don't criticize, we just we speak the truth in love. But honestly speaking, the church sometimes it looks to me that we have lost our moral value. Uh, we have lost our moral uh, moral uh, justification to even correct some politicians. That's the honest truth. I mean, they don't help us. So it must start from, from us. I know it's easier said than done, but we trust the grace of God. Amen. Now, we're, we're moving forward. Oh my God, our time is fast spent. Please, again, let's let's make sure that we are very short in that conversation. If we have more time, we can come back. Uh, Pastor Dr. Bright, I think that's the name, if I'm right. Uh, okay. Uh, Reverend Dr. Uh, Dr. Bright, uh, your, your, your answer was great, sir. Um, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. All right, thank you. I am Apostle John Udo, and I thank you very much. I've been listening to what everyone was saying, and I, I just want to try to be brief. I, If I get you right, we have another meeting tomorrow, right? Where we'll Correct. be able to yes, we're going express to be able to, ourselves we're, better. We're going to be laid down. That won't be wrong. Tomorrow at 3 p.m. Uh, Eastern and uh, oh. I think where, where are, you? Are, you in, are you in England or Nigeria? No, no, no. I, I'm in Nigeria. Okay, so that'll be, 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 be 8 p.m. your time Eastern. tomorrow. 8 p.m. Okay, beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, very quickly, I, I studied politics in school. I'm a graduate of the University of Ibadan. I've been a pastor for many, many years. I'm not active in politics but I studied uh, political science and I, I believe strongly that uh, pastors should be involved. I mean, that Christians should be involved in politics, especially those who are specifically called of God or ordained of God to be in politics. We all have different careers. There are Christians who are called into the political sphere. We have biblical characters like Joseph, like Daniel. The, Daniel had his prophetic calling, but he also had a call into uh, a political sphere in his time. Joseph also played a part in the politics of his time and several others. I listened to the first person that uh, spoke when you gave the opportunity for questions to be asked. I didn't raise my hand all the while because I was driving. So. I wanted to come in immediately after he spoke, but uh, I lent him saying he now has a, a paradigm shift, uh, which makes him believe that in the prophetic timelines, the government for the church is in the future, in the second coming of Jesus Christ and all of that. Uh, what I want to say is that within timelines, there are timelines, right? When Jesus was on earth, he had a timeline that when he comes back, is going to be the government, is going to rule, is, uh, the tr true government is going to be established. But then, aside from the main timeline of Jesus Christ, 
We have other smaller little timelines that also involve several other things that Jesus did not directly get himself involved in. And so that would mean that even as we are in the church today, we can't push politics into when Jesus comes back. We can't push government into when Jesus comes back because there are people who have been ordained of God to go into politics. I have family members who are into politics. My dad is the king of our land where I come from. He was a pastor. He is a pastor with Deeper Life Bible Church. He was a pastor for many years in Deeper Life until when there was a cry in the land because of the injustice and pe the people that were ruling were doing things wrong. And the people said, look, you are from a royal lineage. You are a pastor. We want the right person to take over. And I remember my dad called me and said, John, the people want me to come and rule. I am a pastor. What do you think? And I said to him, Dad, if we let the wrong people take that throne one more time, it might be in the next 200 years before we can correct it. This is an opportunity from the Lord. Take it. And I want to say this, from the time my dad became king, things turned around in the land. Why? Because we have a righteous man in authority. Things, you could see the light broke out in the whole land and all of that. And this is what happens when one who fears God comes into authority. I wouldn't want to take so much time, but I just want to take this position that even within the current timeline that we have, Christians, especially those who are called into politics, should begin to build up. Now, it is not just all about um, election. We should begin the process way ahead, begin to teach people. I teach my members across in our various branches. I teach them, look, in fact, I call them out. If you, are into, if you have a call into politics, see me. I need to pray for you. I need to begin to teach you and guide you and groom you towards that which you want to become. Because we know that if you go in there and you don't know what you are doing, you're going to become like one of them. You become like one of them because they can influence you wrongly. So I begin to teach our people, train them. What does it mean to be in politics? We have examples in the Bible. We teach, we train them so that when they go in there, they are going to do it the right way in the fear of the Lord. I will leave every other thing I would have said until when we meet tomorrow, just so that I'll be very brief with this. Thank you, man of God. Thank you so much, Pastor. We, we really appreciate your perspective and uh, it kind of co corroborated what uh, we've been talking about since last, about two, three weeks ago when we started the discussion on Christians and politics and all that. And I'm glad that you're one of those who, who probably are, you know, you're already doing what we are suggesting and recommending in that. You know, it's not just okay to we talk about it. Let's let's be proactive and raise people and train them, and so that everything is still in alignment with what uh, Doctor Rosa, the last speaker before you said, that Daniel was a prayer was a pray man, and when he got involved in politics in Babylon, he didn't quit pray. Unfortunately, yeah. when people when we're not deliberate and intentional in the training of these people that we want them to represent us. In, in the in the political system, that plays. That, that, I've never been a politician, but I have, I have people that <laughs> were, were there before, and uh, some of them, it's like <laughs> they were praying that, according to some of them, they are praying that Jesus should not come before they finish their service, that there's, <laughs> because they messed up big time. <laughs> so, because they were not properly trained, because that requires a lot of a lot of wisdom. As a matter of fact, there are times when even including the trainees. You still have to, you know, depend on the grace of God and let them know how to hear God for themselves because there are certain decisions that training may not even cut. It will be moment by moment with them of God for that moment. You know, things that may not be, may not may, may not even be in the curriculum or what we have what we have taught them, but they are, they are just going there. I mean, it's like, like somebody going to Bible school and uh, you know, it's the best students in the Bible school, but when that comes to Turning a church practically, then there are certain things that it will be confronted with that that were not taught in Bible school. <laughs> so at that point, yeah, you will have to depend on the moment by moment guidance of the Holy Spirit, you know, and uh, and the grace of God. 
Thank you so much, uh, uh, Manoga. We can't wait to see you tomorrow. <laughs> uh, to All right, the thank you. Yeah. All right. DJ, uh, please go ahead. You can raise your hand. Uh, yes, sir. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, this is so amazing. And uh, I just wanted to add a, something with respect to what Dr. Ducente said. I forgot about that. That's very important. You know, the we, we have several challenges on this front. And we're not going to run away because there are challenges. The truth of the matter is that, yes, we agreed that there has to be involvement. But then we have to also re-educate ourselves of how that involvement is going to be. They are just like what uh, Dr. Bright, uh, who just spoke, said now. You see, we are not trying to push a Christian agenda. No, this is about justice. This is about fairness. That's what, so we, if we're, and, and this is where the problems are. When people start to talk at see well, this is about promoting a, a Christian agenda. No, this is about equality. This is about justice. This is about the things that Christ stood for. Integrity, justice in the land. I love the example that he gave. I'm very certain that the reason they looked at the father is that they were tired of how terrible things were. And they needed somebody they felt, right? They felt would do justice. I, I didn't think it was because of the title of pastor, even though that was how he grew up his character. But they needed somebody of justice. And the same thing has happened to me here. I have associations here that I literally, because I wanted to see how things work here. I don't want to be talking from, I have an association that I enjoyed here. Some of them are begging me, literally begging me, please, can you come and be the president? Please, can you, can you come and, and take over the, the president? Because why? When I go there, I sit down and I tell them what is exactly going to happen and how it's going to happen. And so it's about justice. If we're talking about politics, I just want to add it this angle. This is not about pushing some church agenda. This is because at the end of it all, for example, in this country now, we are connected in our suffering together. I don't care who you are, don't care what part of the country that you live. Sir, today, 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 I had to trek, walk from my house to a filling station to go and buy fuel in a jerry can and bring back home. And how are they selling it? Is that a cab driver goes to the filling station, right? Buys it and then pass the car. So so, so the, the picture I'm trying to paint to you is that the taxi driver is not the filling station because he goes, buys, and then he comes and resells by the roadside. This affects our productivity. It affects the ministry. In a situation, if I do the statistics of how much work hours we lose because of loss of power, so, sir, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I just want to play this out and I and think that's what Dr. Ducito was saying. This is, I'm not here trying to, I, because number one, Christ, does, like uh, uh, Dr. Adam said, Christ did not need to invade or change the Roman Empire to make an impact. But his life, his light of bringing justice was there, fairness, equity, helping the people. That's what this is, should be. So that means that when we get involved, when we get involved, this, this answers the issue of party. This answers the issue, issue of whether this person is from my side or not from my side, whether this person is not. No, we are looking for one thing because justice and fairness is what every human being needs. Thank you, sir. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, CJ. And, and what you said now, talking about justice and fairness, whether they are Hindus or Muslims or, or, or atheists, we have to be fair on all of them. I mean, that's. Actually, that's how to show the light of Christ. Thank you so much for that. Uh, as a matter of fact, no, I, I should bring it to a close uh, before Pastor uh, speaks briefly for the last time. Uh, I was just thinking, as every, I was listening with rapt attention to all the speakers today. And it just occurred to me, and I, my, my mind just went through the scriptures, and I'm like, so why will Apostle Paul actually say that we should pray for, pray, pray for those who are in authority? There's no power that be except of God. That's for another time. It looks to me that the apostles themselves, you know, just behave like Christ did. Christ was not involved in partisan politics, but he did have people that were playing politics, that were in politics, that were career politicians around him, just like Dr. Uh, you know, Bright said earlier. I mean, Joseph for for for, for, for here, one of them in March 27, he was a member of the Sahindrin, you know, called the senator today. He was one that went to the body, I mean, went to the pilot to. And not to ask for the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. So 
but I think what you are discussing here, which we don't want to lose sight of, is uh, no the, the church leaders should be careful not to get into partisan politics because it's a very volatile subject outside. Uh, because, like uh, Reverend Kodi Adam said earlier, you're going to have all the various, various political parties uh, members in your church, and some people are not matured enough to have civil discussion. The moment you mention you get, you are, you are leaning towards a particular party, it can just cause an uproar. That's just the honest truth. And the Christ we're supposed to be preaching uh, is misunderstood. Because if people are no longer uh, you know, inclined to hear you anymore, then you have just lost your audience to preach the gospel. Because, and, and I, I don't think that, that's, the, that's the will of God. I mean, I, I, I made a mistake before. Uh, in our church in the U.S., but I learned my lesson. I mean, it's not possible not to not to have a pastor that will have his own ideology. You, you, know, you have to know somebody that you believe in and that you want to vote for. Maybe somebody that aligns with your values. But please, as a church leader, keep that to yourself. You can guide people and you know encourage them, you know, to vote whatever they think. As more of I think we said last last Saturday that. I don't think there'll be any particular popular, I mean, any particular you know, flawless party or a flawless presidential aspirant. But at the point, you have to have to begin to you know, do uh, church by elimination. So which one, which one is a lesser evil between the, between the two or three? So that, I think that would be wisdom because to say, except you want to vote into power, uh, another pastor. Even pastors will go there and mess up. That's the honest truth. That that thing, that the shoes are very heavy. It's not as easy as, as, as it looks on the outside. That's the honest truth. And I think somebody said it here today that no matter how perfect this party or this president person I and mean, this president can be, it is not the responsibility of the government to legislate against say. the government. Because if political parties and, and politicians can fix all the problems in the world, especially the ones that have to do with moral issues. Then, then the church has failed. I believe very strongly that what part of the basic responsibilities of the government provide security, protection of protection of lives and property, and you know, create an enabling, enabling environment for people to thrive in their business and all of that. When, when, when the government has failed and all of that, then they, we should kick them out. But the issue of uh, you know, immorality and all of that, that's not the responsibility of the government. <laughs> so I can, as long as America allows me to have freedom of speech, then uh, any other thing, I can live with it. Because freedom of speech means that I'll be able to preach this Christ. But, but I'm going to have a problem if you're not saying, well, this is how much you can preach. You can't talk, you can't talk about Jesus anymore, then that's a problem. So, and if, 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 if my, my, my life is not even safe in the, in the environment, how am I supposed to preach? Am I going to preach? So those are the things that are happening in the third world countries that you know we, we need to talk about because the church will only function effectively when certain structures are, are in place, but to legislate against sin, it's not going to happen. All right, so Dr. Udewiri will finally, finally before we pray. Thank you very much, sir. And I want to thank everybody that has spoken today. Powerful, powerful contributions. I have been um, very blessed. However, I I have uh, I have a different perspective in the sense that I'm beginning to feel that this conversation is gravitating towards Christian politicians and not Christians in politics. Because we seem to now be talking about grooming a certain group of people for political career. Um, but I believe we're all living in, a demo, in democracies in, in the different parts of the world that we are. And one of the beautiful things about democracy is that it, it allows the participation of everybody. And the forces that we are against don't believe that it is only a certain people that are called for politics, they they um, they mobilize people because at the end of the day, politics is about numbers. It's a game of numbers, and so they mobilize people 
many times illiterate, many times people who do not know they are left from there. You'd be amazed that many of these thugs will meet out on the roads. They are card carrying members of different political parties. So at the end of the day, if we are really serious, we cannot send one David to the war. It may take one David to kill a Goliath, but a David cannot do it. A single David cannot defeat the whole Philistine army. We all still have to join in the battle. We may not be the ones to lead, to run for um, elected positions, but we all must be part of delegates. So it's not just about raising a few people to go in as career producer. It's about you and me going to join parties or to found parties, understanding the parties that align with our ideologies. If we cannot find anyone, then let's found our own. Let's connect with, with um, people of other faith that also share those ideologies. Let's, let's found our own parties. Let's, let's be involved at the, at the grassroots. Let us elect people that will now be electable by the general public. So I, I think that's, that's what we should focus on. Raise a strong group of people who know they are left from their rights. And because of that, they can make decisions at grassroots level. And we must mobilize our member, including us. We don't have to be conspicuous. You could just be a silent member of a party. But by the time it's time to vote, that's where politics can really happen. That's where somebody comes to um, mobilize you, somebody comes to talk to you about his agenda and all that. And if they align with the idea, and that's what, one of the I like about American politics. American democracy, and like most democracies, just that Americans have, have developed it as the, the best, is that everybody participates at the ground level, at the grassroots level, and they don't leave politics mainly for, um, for our career politicians. Um, and then I also wanted to say something to structure that um, just because people are disenchanted doesn't mean that that is structure. I don't agree with uh, Pastor CJ on that. We must convert that popularity into structure, which is why even though the fame is increasing on social media, we must now, and talking as Peter B to Peter B personal, I know we're still going to continue tomorrow. We must not just follow the buzz of social media, we must go back and, and, and preach that man or whatever, whoever we believe in to um, people who are not on social media, to our grandmother in the villages, to their friends, to people in our community and convince them that this is the right man. That's when it becomes um, a structure. Thank you very much. Okay. So you're, you're Peter Beeman. Anyway, we'll talk about that tomorrow. <laughs> uh, <laughs> praise God. All right, I think we have come to the end of today's discussion. And uh, thank you so much, Pastor Yudiko, for your perspective. You know, we're, we're learning every day. And uh, the beautiful thing about this, this, this kind of conversation is that, you know, we're, we're gathering, we're galvanizing different ideas. As a matter of fact, I've learned so much today uh, about politics because I'm not a career politician. I've never been involved in politics, you know, apart from uh, voting in the last election. Uh, here in the U.S. and, um, you know, I, I voted for the candidate I believe as my values, even, you know, even though they didn't have everything, but at least again, you have to take, so you have to, you know, you have to put everything down to somebody with, somebody with, a, with a lesser evil or whatever it is. So we're going to discuss this tomorrow. Please, all these handsome faces and beautiful faces I'm looking at, Join us at 3 p.m. Eastern, and that will be 8 p.m. Nigerian time and 8 p.m. UK. If you think today has been explosive, wait for tomorrow. Man, I don't even know how long we're gonna, it's going to take us tomorrow because we're going to be raw. It's going to be uncut. It's no, you know, I mean, no filter. I mean, of course, we're going to be civil and, and going to be very, very considerate and not allow our emotions to get the best of us. But we're going to be laying down facts about Nigerian election 2023. And we can't wait to see you tomorrow by the grace of God. Now, it's not going to be broadcast on, on, on YouTube uh, because we don't have, um, unfortunately, we'll have done, we'll have to do that, but we don't have uh, a YouTube account for that yet. 
and we don't want to use our ministries uh, YouTube because it's it's not church. It's it's completely political. So we don't we don't want to confuse people. So so it's going to be truly on YouTube. I'm sorry, on on Zoom. And uh, uh, Pastor, do you do you see do you have the link on on the flyer I sent to you? Can you please help us put the uh, the link? Or the, the Zoom number on the chat, if you don't mind. Uh, while you do that, uh, can we please open our videos so that we can, you know, uh, kind of fellowship for, with ourselves for the next one minute? Then we'll pray. Thank you so much. So, we are participants on the panel tomorrow. The, you know, uh, they already know themselves. So, 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 I'm going to play, I'm going to play a neutral role, a non partisan role. So, I don't belong to any particular party. We're going to, but I know the end of the party we're going to be discussing tomorrow. I don't have any particular candidate. But we're going to be talking. As a matter of fact, there is a third alternative. I mean, as as far as Nigeria is concerned, now we have uh, Peter Obi, we have uh, uh, um, Atiku Mohammed. Is it is it Mohammed or Atiku? What's the last name now? Let us go on then. <laughs> <laughs> say what's he did? I said, let these, people, let these people call his name. <laughs> I forget his name. <laughs> no, I said, let these people call his name. <laughs> well, let these people call his name. Uh, we, we have one, one, of, one, of his, one of his people are here today. Akio Basse is one of his people. Let them call his name. <laughs> Atiku Abu Bakar. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> then, then we have a... Uh, we have a... Uh, you know, Tinubu. So uh, we're Bola Tinubu. So and of course, we we have a, we have a third a third ideology that we can't talk about now. Uh, <laughs> that so so these people don't even believe that there will be election in 2023. But we're not, we're not going to talk about those ones. So we're going to talk about you know the ones that are already going on, the process that's going on. So thank you so much. Uh, it's good to see you, all of us. So let, let's let's pray. Uh, Pastor Pamphili was supposed to raise his hand, but I can't see him now. Uh, oh. Okay. All right. So can we just pray briefly? First of all, let's just thank the Lord for all of the contributors. Let's give all the praise and all the glory for this beautiful discussion. Father, we thank you tonight. We, we give you all the glory and all the praise for the brilliance of your people and for the wisdom and for the grace to even get involved because of the future of Nigeria and the will will be done in that country in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. So if you are following me on my Instagram, the, the, the reply will be there. But if not, it's on, it's on the chat. Thank you, Dr. Olugari. The fly with the, 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 the zoom number is there. 3 p.m. tomorrow, we are gonna have a blast. Uh, as a matter of fact, the zoom will be opened 30 minutes before, so you can join because we, we might just as well just because we have a limited space. We don't expect too many people to join, but if 100 people join, that's fine. If 20 people join, that's fine. It's, it, what, what, that's what matters. So, uh, let me that, is it 8 p.m. Nigeria time or 9 p.m.? I have, we have 9 p.m. on the flight. I think it's 8 p.m. Sorry, we, the, the, the flight is going to be corrected. It's 8 p.m. It's 3 p.m. Eastern. I think you guys are five hours ahead. So it's going to be 8 p.m. Okay. tomorrow. Right. Yeah. So, Dr. Lugayode, thank you for, for your perspective. We thank you. I'm just welcoming all of us. I mean, including all of us, but thanking us, not in any particular order, but as we appear on the screen. Pastor CJ, <laughs> praise God for all Thank God for your life. Your Excellency, you look like that man is going to be the president of Nigeria one day or something. Praise God, <laughs> <laughs> Doctor. All I do is that. Thanks for your perspective. We appreciate you so much. Sir. The chaplain, chaplain Doctor Stephen Olujimi. Thank you, sir. We appreciate you uh, for, for your perspective. <laughs> Amen. And I think uh, we're going to we're going to see him tomorrow also on that on that uh, discussion. And of course, uh, Pastor Victoria Olabisi, thank you for coming. We appreciate you, sir. I appreciate you, ma'am. And uh, Pastor Ike Obase, the man that will be... Okay, so it most likely I took a book out tomorrow. Pastor <laughs> Ike Obase, good to see you. 
we, we can we do, can we, can we, can we do hear why you believe that people should be next president tomorrow? Amen. And uh, <laughs> Pastor Peter, uh, I, I, I want to thank you so much. Appreciate you, Pastor Paul Boloaji. Good to see you, man. And of course, Doctor Victor. Am, thanks so much. We love and appreciate it. Pastor Adeni Kiori, thank you. Pastor Abel and Mudichela Olelua, thank you so much for coming. We, we, we love you. And uh, so thank you. 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 Have a blast in your various churches tomorrow. I see you 30 minutes to the time. This Zoom will be open 10 minutes to the time tomorrow. That will be 7.30 your time. But the discussion will go. We start immediately at 8 o'clock your time on the door and 3 p.m. Eastern. I can't wait to learn from you guys tomorrow. I, I don't know about Nigerian police anymore, so we have just played the role of a, of a, of a, you know, of a moderate, moderator, and we're going to have a very, very explosive, but civil discussion on Nigerian future, presidential election 2023. Thank you, Alan, and have a good night. Good Thank night. You, good, night. Good, night. Good, night. good night, Buster. Thank you, sir. Good night, sir. Bye-bye. Good night.